Hey there, welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm gonna be upgrading the fan in my Glowforge Basic to this larger inline fan. So someone recently told me about this and they kind of showed me a quick before and after of how good it is. So I thought I would make a quick video showing me upgrading mine. It definitely made me wanna do it. And you gotta love seasonal allergies, so try to disregard my watery eyes, but uh, the pollen's bad here right now. So let's get into this. This is my setup right now. It just comes out of the back of the machine, has a short run, and then actually I have a blast gate so that I can control the outside air that comes back in. Um, I don't want moisture getting back into my machine. This has worked pretty well for me, and I think I can kind of maintain this same thing, but using the new fan. It looks like this comes with everything you need, including uh, a couple of hose clamps to clamp your hose here and on the other side. So that's really nice. Before I install this thing, I want to do a test. I've got my camera set up. Uh, this distance here, I've swapped out the mic for a shotgun mic and I'm going to record startup and then making a cut with the stock fan. So start this thing and then turn on the unit. Let me open the blast gate here. All right, let's listen to this thing. Now it's time to swap out this fan. This fan comes with some of this rigid foam that it's shipped with, and I'm just gonna set it back there on the platform rather than mounting it and see if I can just get this to sit on it. That'll just add even more sound dampening, which is really what I'm looking for with this. Um, I mean, better fume extraction, but also sound dampening. And I don't think I'm gonna have to mount it down. It kind of depends on how powerful this thing is and if it's gonna wanna shift around. There are two cords. There's a power cord and then a controller cord. The controller cord goes in here. And then this can sit off to the side, turn it on and off and change your speed settings. All right, now comes the fun part of getting back here, making a cut in this hose and then getting this situated. It has directional lines showing which way the airflow goes. So I want that to go this way so that my air can flow out the exhaust and um, looks like it's gonna fit in the space pretty well. So I'm gonna do some maneuvering. I'm gonna cut the current hose that I have and then I'll use these two uh, hose clamps to get them back on there. To complete this task, you'll need some sort of a razor knife or maybe some heavy duty scissors. And then you'll probably need some wire cutters to cut through the wire that runs through this whole hose. Gonna connect it while it's up here where I can reach it. So on here. You gotta put the hose clamp on first. Real brilliant. Want to get that on there pretty tight. Okay. Just don't do the same thing twice. Hose clamp. Tighten the hose clamps really well. Of course, if you tighten it too much, there is a chance that you could actually damage the plastic on the fan, but you want to get it really tight so that you don't have any fumes leaking out. Uh, there we go. Yeah, that's going to work well. Sitting just like it should. Might have to take a little of that slack out of there just so there's not so much of that pulling. We'll see. We'll have to see how that does. I'll have to do a little cable management eventually. This thing put right over here so it's by the power button and I will remember to actually turn it on. I suggest positioning the control near the power button for the Glowforge. That way you'll remember to turn on the fan each time that you use it. This particular fan does not have an automatic on feature when you turn on the Glowforge. 
In order to get this fan to work properly, you have to actually tell the onboard fan to not function. And the way to do that is to open up your Glowforge platform and go under there and tell it that you're using the air filter. All right, I've got another print job loaded up in here to do. I've got the fan in there. It's set up. It's turned on to half speed. And I've got my camera rolling with that same microphone and you can see right about the same position it was so you can get a good idea of the sound. So I'm going to go ahead and start this. Now pretty much all you hear is the actual arm of the laser moving. At this point I was in complete disbelief. I kept leaning over and listening and looking to see if the thing was still operating. I was used to the very loud, almost angry beehive sound of the previous fan. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you checking it out. Hopefully this gave you some information to make a good decision about whether you want to do an upgrade for your Glowforge. I'm really pleased with how quiet this thing is, even on the full setting of the fan. I actually just had a phone call with somebody while this thing was running a print job. I like that it sits behind there pretty well from the front. You can't see it that much, so it kind of keeps the whole aesthetic of the Glowforge. I'll have links below to this fan that I picked up and some of the tools that I used. If you shop with those links, it helps my channel out because I get a kickback from Amazon, uh, but it doesn't cost you anything. So click those links. Pick one of these up and make your Glowforge quieter. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.